Welcome to another edition of Chroma Digitizing. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about push-pull. What is that? Well, you're about to find out. I'm going to try to explain push and pull. Now, I'm using a cup. The cup, the shape of the cup is the constant, okay? That's not going to change. I'm going to put my material over the cup, okay? And I'm going to take this pen and just draw a couple little dots around where the edge of the cup is, okay? So remember, this is my shape that doesn't change. So if I were to do complex fill and fill in the inside of the cup, the rim of the cup should stay the same size. So let's make believe that this is my complex fill. If I have a very light complex fill, the shape of the cup should stay normal, but as you can see from here, it's already inside a little bit. So it already moved a little bit on the inside, not by much, but a little bit, okay? So then if I add more weight to it, you'll notice that the cup starts to get deeper or the material starts to stretch out and go deeper into the cup. And with every layer of weight that I add or with every pound that I add to it, look what happens. Now the shape of the cup is way out here. So with push-pull compensation, what you're trying to do is you're trying to guess how much extra material do you have to put on the embroidery or how much further do you need to go from the edge of the cup so that once all the stuff is filled inside, it's gonna stay. So if I remove all this, you'll notice that in order to get this shape, I would have to go this far over more than the shape of the cup is in order to get them, in order to make it all uh, stay within the circle. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Let's go look at the software. So as you saw from the example that I showed you on the cup, Essentially, when we're doing push-pull compensation, we are just anticipating the amount of shrink that a design is gonna have while it's embroidering. So if you were to draw a perfect circle in embroidery, depending on the angle of the stitching, it's going to squeeze it like a belt on a ball. So imagine if you have one of those big exercise balls and you put a belt on it and you squeeze that belt in the middle, it would make the ball kind of spread out long ways and get skinny in the waist, right? So push-pull is just anticipating how much you have to uh, give in order for, for it to be the complete same circle once you're done with the embroidery. As you saw from the demonstration on the cup, let's make it right here on Chroma. Now we're using Chroma Lux, and you can do this on Chroma Inspire and in Plus, except that it's not going to automatically do the compensation for you. So in order to do it on Inspire, you would have to set the your own push-pull compensation, which is not a hard thing to do, but there is no uh, easy way to do it on Inspire. So with Lux, it makes it really easy for you. So let's say we have this circle, and we are going to hit F7, and we're going to convert this circle into a complex fill. So as in our demonstration, if you look at the direction that these stitches are going, these stitches are going diagonally. So there is going to be a pull, an inner pull from here to here from the inside. So they're going to pull like this and it's going to make the material shrink. So that means that if I were to embroider this design right now as it is, I'm going to make uh, another circle. I'm going to right click on this. Let's hit F7, right click and let's create, let me select it first. Let's create a border. And we're going to make it a very close border, but just one millimeter. So if I were to digitize this just as it is without any type of push-pull compensation, that means that this inner circle would end up looking like this. This is, since the stitching is going this way, it's going to draw that inner circle in and then when you go draw the outside circle, it's going to come off of it. So push-pull is you anticipating what the material is going to do and giving yourself a little extra margin so that when it shrinks and you do the outside circle, it's going to look right. So you're kind of playing a guessing game. But with embroidery, once you get used to it, you really don't have to guess too much. 
It's usually just a couple of millimeters that you have to fix it. And luckily with Chroma Lux, it does it for you. If I were to bring this back to normal, let me hit undo and undo. So now our circle is back to normal. Uh, if I were to go and select this inner circle and I right click on it. Oh, let me go here. Sorry. If I click the, let's click the inner circle. If I right click on the inner circle and I go to my utility, notice how on the utility there's a change style. Okay. Now we're in the normal style, but before I do that, I want you to see something. If I go to my push pull compensation right now, there is none. If I wanted to do this manually, I'm going to erase, I'm going to make this outer circle just a little bit bigger so you can appreciate what happens to the circle when it changes shape a little bit. Let's make it just a little bit bigger. And let's center it on that one. So we're going to make it center on each other. All right. So notice that there's a slight gap around the entire circle. If I were to adjust the pull, push pull compensation right now, it's going to make this, because this stitch is diagonal like that, it's going to make this edge come out more this way and that edge come out more this way. So if I were to select that image, the inner image, and go to my push-pull compensation, I'm going to hit absolute, and here I'm going to put 0.5. So if I put 0.5, watch carefully what happens to the circle. Notice how the circle got longer in the direction of the stitching because that's where it's going to shrink. It's like putting a belt on it. These edges are now closed. So I have anticipated this to shrink a little bit. So in order for me to get ahead of the game, I had to give it a little bit more. So I'm exaggerating the shape of the circle so that as soon as it embroiders, it will embroider correctly. So one way of doing it is you can use the push-pull compensation. If you didn't have this push-pull compensation like in Inspire, well, what you could do is like I showed you before, is you can just take the edge of that circle and just drag it out and manually do the compensation for yourself. All right, so that's one way. We achieved the same exact thing. Now, one of the cool things about Chroma Lux is that if I right click on that image, let me, let me go to my selector tool. I'm going to click on the circle. If I right click on it, I can go to utility and change the style. So depending on what material I'm going to be embroidering on, I can pick accordingly. So in this case, this is normal. So it's assuming that everything is going to be perfect and it's going to come out great. But what you often see on the digitizing screen is not what you often see when you embroider your image. So always do your testing first before you go live on your garment. So in this case, we're going to go from normal and let's pick a... Uh, a fleece material and let's see what happens so if we click fleece and we pick OK notice how it did exactly what I did with the push-pull and if we were to go to the push-pull compensation notice that it added the 0.5 automatically if I were to click that again right click and go to utility and change the style again and let's go from normal to silk and click OK Notice what happens. The, the push-pull automatically changed. So it's going to change by a couple tenths of a millimeter. Uh, it could be more, it could be less, but depending on what material you're embroidering on, the machine will compensate. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to get it right every single time, but it's a ballpark. Uh, and usually, if you're doing a design with multiple areas of registration, you might want to do them segment by segment and not do the entire thing. So if you saw the episode on the Deco Summit uh, back design that I made. That one was a really fun design, but I had to do it in sections so that when it embroidered, it went out correctly. So we're going to put a link in the card above and in the description below for that video so you can see it. So essentially, that's all push and pull is. It's just anticipating that the material is going to shrink. And what you're doing is you're making your base material fit the top material. The top stitch is not going to change. So this stitch right here, I'm not going to change this border. The blue line is going to stay the same. What I have to do is I have to change this. Most of the time, satin stitches or run stitches are not going to change the behavior of the material. They're not going to make the material warp. So it's usually when you're doing your complex fills or if you're doing heavy satins. So anytime you have a really heavy satin, let's say if I were to do a satin like this, that's going to cause push-pull. 
So it's going to cause this material to squeeze in between because the direction of the stitches are like that. And just like a, a tube of toothpaste, if you squeeze it down the middle, it's going to want to come out the top and come out the bottom. So in embroidery, sometimes you'll see letters. When they make the I, they'll make them about that size, but then they'll make an O look like this. They'll make the O slightly bigger than the I because this letter, when it finishes, it's going to be pulling on itself. And so the I, because it's, notice how the I is a little bit shorter than the O. When this I ends up embroidering, it'll be actually longer than it was before. So sometimes you'll see letters uh, in the alphabet when they're, when you're looking at your run sheet or you're looking at your design that they look kind of off, but when you embroider it, they look correct because of the push pull. You're anticipating that the material is going to either shrink or stretch. And that's what the push pull is. So luckily with Chroma, you can change the push pull compensation just by either doing it manually by changing the lines or you can come here and do it in absolute or percentage and draw the number yourself depending on your experience and what the material you use. And if you're liking the content that we're creating here at Rakoma, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and remember to hit that notification bell so you know when we're coming out with the next great content. And as always, if you have any suggestions or tips about your experience with push pull, leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.